Okay, so last night I processed year one, round one of the Zoom simulation for our 3.30 winter class, and I was very pleasantly surprised at the results. Now remember, we're running one round of the simulation every Tuesday and Thursday for the next three weeks, so we're doing full six rounds. And you want to get a cumulative score of t over 2,500, which means if we divide 2,500 by six, you need at least 417 points each week on average to get that A score for this project. Now in the past I've done this simulation with plenty of other courses. I've had oh, easily over 80 percent of the teams get the required amount of points to, to get the full A for this project. So I've set the bar pretty low and you can see that a number of teams have scored over 800 points for this first round. And a majority of teams scored over 500 points for this first round. So most student teams are on track to do well in this simulation. Now, let's look at the gross profit margin. So if you want to know why these, some of these teams are at the top end, you have to understand that in the real world, as well as a simulation, companies need to improve their gross profit margin. And this company industry started at 40%. And you might say, 40%, well, how is I supposed to know that? Well, you could look at the financials of the company and easily divided the gross profits by the revenues or sales and got that 40% more. And you'll see that most companies understood that and they have profit margins greater than 40%, with some of them reaching 49 and 48%, which is amazing. The teams that have less than 40% don't didn't do well that well in the simulation or could have done better if they understood they have to beat your profit margin. So like in the real world and in the simulation, if companies want to do well, they have to increase their sales, their revenues, and they have to increase their profits, and they have to increase their profit margins. That's what investors like, and that's how, why and how stock prices go up. And we see that some of the top teams that have the best overall gross profit margins are also the top teams who have the best stock prices. And you know what's really amazing, if I just go back here to um, this current round points, here's the percentile rank, which after reading this, I've learned that this is sort of like the SAT. It gives you the percentage of other teams you beat. And there's 12,000 other teams that played the simulation in the past five years that my students in this class have beat 89, 87, 86, 85, 80 percent. I have five teams beating 80 percent of 12,000 other teams who have played the simulation, showing how superior some of our Stony Brook students really are in the first round of points. And also in gross profit margins, I have a number of teams above 70 percent performance in gross profit margins for the first round. Now if you look at stock price, also I have a number of companies doing very well in stock price. And if you're falling below the 50 percentile mark in any of these categories, you're not doing the best. You really need to think about what you're doing and how to compete and what investors are looking for in a company. And what they're looking for is increased revenues, increased profits, increased profit margins. Now in return on equity, we look at what was returned back to customer, to investors. So we have one team over 90% rank of return of, um, for the equity invested in the company. That's astonishing. And most teams did pretty well in this area. How do you improve this return on equity? You have to give, equity is the amount of money invested in the company by shareholders. So the more profits you generate, the higher the return on equity. Okay, so total points are going to be the same, should be similar, should be identical to what we have. Here it is. Because we only, this is total points, we only have one round. When we get to round two, you'll see this total points will increase because it's cumulative. So we'll add whatever Stony Brook Auto makes in round two will be added to this 900 and that will be their total points. And that's the points based on your grade. So it's cumulative. Um, now operating profit margins, the big change here is how much have you spent on advertising? If you've overspent on advertising, your operating profit margins will be reduced greatly. And if you spent efficiently in advertising, your profit margins will be operating profit margins will be better. So you should always look at how much are you spending on advertising versus the benefits of that advertising. Okay. So if we look at earnings per share, we see that a number of students, you should be, I think after the first round, you should be over 
you know, three dollars and seventy-five cents of earnings per share. So companies, number of companies are have done that. Another com number of companies have not done that. So why are earnings per share below that three dollars and seventy-five cents mark? That is a fifty percent tile mark. Well, you're not producing enough profits, or you have too much. Um, are you taking? You're spending too much on interest. Or you're spending too much on marketing, or you have too many outstanding shares. Return on assets. Look at the percentile return uh, that the assets generate. So it looks at the total assets of the company versus the profits. And all of these financial ratios you can discover in the financial textbook. Uh, and we're going to be learning about these more as the class goes on. But you should go ahead and look these ratios up and learn a little bit more about them and how to improve them. Uh, net profit margin, this comes after um, your taxes and your interest. So we're going to look at, you know, if you borrowed a lot of money, this could affect your net profit margin, or if you owe a lot of taxes, nothing, everybody's taxed the same in this game, so nothing can really do to improve the tax efficiency. Revenue per share, and we have, you know, even though you have, this team has the highest revenue per share, it's not the team with the highest points or the highest um, score, but I'll give you an example. Here are two companies that you can buy. They're, they both cost the same. One company has five billion in sales. One company has a hundred million in sales. Which company would you rather own? And most people say the company with the five billion in sales. The correct answer is to say, well, I don't know. What are the profits for the company? Well, the company that has five billion in sales um, has a nine hundred million dollar loss. And the company with the one hundred million dollars in sales has a seventy million dollar profit. Now, which company would you rather have? So you see, it's not about who has top revenues or sales it's about who has top profits but you do need revenues to generate profits so having high revenues is good as long as you can translate them into more profits so that's something that you have to focus on in the simulation sometimes it's good it may be worth it to sacrifice some sales but you know and how do you sacrifice sales maybe your price is a little bit higher than other competitors so you're not going to get as many sales but you're going to get much more profits so it's a strategy it's a balancing of that okay moving forward Total asset turnover, looking at um, your your assets to sales. Uh, okay, so those round out the percentage rank. So this gives you a good idea of how well you perform in the simulation. So if I go to uh, my demo, I have a this my demo is sort of like your individual practice. So when I'm just going to walk you through what I would have done for year one. So I would have, um, you know, let's see. Fuel economy is important, so maybe I'll increase that. Engine power is not so important, so I can go below that. You know, so basically I would, you know, fill out these cars based on how important they are to the buyer, and then develop a price and a forecast. Now, the, the forecast is really critical to use the student user guide to calculate the forecast. So in the student user guide or student manual, I've noticed that they have a pretty detailed section on forecasting. So if I go down here, and it gives me a growth rate for each of the vehicles, which is critical, how much they're growing. And it gives me a chart on the, if all the teams are equal and made all the same decisions, this is what would be expected to sell. So if you think your cars are a little bit better, then you can for forecast a little bit higher. Uh, if you think your cars are not as attractive, you should probably forecast lower. So I would continue to fill this out and, and making sure see my profit margins here are above 40%. And that's key for the first round. Okay, so I made, what's nice about this is if I do do something really crazy, I get a warning saying that's not cool. And uh, I appreciate that. And that helps me to um, keep my car more realistic. So last one is luxury. So just fill this out. Now I'm just kind of throwing these numbers in. Everybody's already completed. See so what's interesting with the luxury brand is consumers don't really care too much about price. So I'm always going to make it at the higher end. And it's really, if you think about it, when you buy a luxury car, if you're buying a, a luxury car that's inexpensive, then how are people going to know you're rich? And that's part of the appeal of luxury cars to kind of show off. So that's why. Sometimes the higher the price, the better on the luxury car. Okay, so let me submit this. And remember, 
we're not filling out the reflective observations for the simulation. Okay, and again, for advertising, I would have to really look at a student manual which details the effectiveness of the advertising. This is the effectiveness percentages, and I have to translate that into dollars. And that, that takes a while, so I'm just going to skip over that, fill it out offline, and then I'm going to move into production. Okay, so here I'm in production, and I see I need 2, 28, 17, and 1750. So I'm going to need to buy some additional plants, which is a, a big investment because they're $10 million per plant. And then I'm going to build my cars. Okay. And I'm going to move into uh, my, my technology. So I'm just going to buy one level of everything. So, and this is really important because I need to make these operational investments to reduce the cost of building my car in year two. So in order, just like everything, customer expectations keep increasing. The cost of building cars go up. So if I don't make these operational investments, I'll never be able to maintain or increase the profitability of the company. Um, and these, we're not filling out these reflective observations, but it is important to know that capacity utilization is, is something that you want. So here, 100% utilization, I have capacity of 2,000 cars and I'm building 1,900 cars. It's pretty close to full capacity. But here, I'm only building 28, 2,700 cars based on a 3,000 capacity plant. There's 3, 300 cars I'm not building that's kind of a waste that I could have built, but um, I'm not building them because I don't think I'm going to sell them. Anyway, we move into the last round, the last page, which is finance. And here I'm going to look at my surplus. So I have a $10 million deficit. So I'm going to have to raise some funds to um, make sure that I don't have a deficit. Because deficit is bad. Companies, you don't want your company to have a little surplus here. You don't want your company to say, oh, we ended the year with unexpected deficit because we don't know what we're doing with our finances and we didn't plan properly. It's just really poor. Poor financial work. Okay, so now I've finished this and I'm going to uh, process. And you have a practice rounds like my demo that you can do and keep redoing and reset and use those practice rounds to really become more successful. Okay, so here we are in year two and I'm getting, this is, everybody starts out year zero the same. So here are my year one results. So it looks at a year over year change. So my revenues went from 12 to 22, which is the 81% increase, I earned 81 points. My quick ratio, declined so I lost points on my quick ratio uh, I made points by increasing my profit margins I made um, my total asset turnover was less efficient because I bought a lot of assets but my return on investment return on equity uh, earnings per share and return on assets all went up as did my market capitalization this is just the stock price times the outstanding shares and the limit is you can't you can't earn more than 100 points on any area so uh, my forecasting was a little bit more accurate. I earned points there, but I had an unexpected deficit. How did this happen? I lost 100 points here. So I only had 740 points. So I want to figure out where, why did I get this deficit? It showed I had a surplus. How could that be wrong? Well, let's find out. If you look at your production page, you'll see that I have um, left. I didn't sell everything I forecasted. So my performers are based on my forecast. So if I unselled vehicles, then I'm going to have not have as much profits as I thought, and that can lead to an unexpected deficit. Now, if you want to know, how did I do in the simulation? How can I improve? There's this assessment tab. So here it tells me that I only got three out of five stars for revenues. So my score was 22. Uh, my percentile rank was 53, and my performance was average. And if I press this little button here, it gives me an idea of how to improve, what I can do to improve. So my stock price did great. Gross margins were great. My total asset turnover wasn't as good, so it gives me an idea of what I can do to improve. So in each of the areas, for example, my cash management was poor because I have a deficit. My performance was low. And this will say, you know, have more of a cash surplus at the end of the year to make up for unexpected inventory. So you want to look through the self-assessment to really, you know, figure out what you did good, what you did poorly, and how to improve. Uh, then you have your charts where you can look at your performance charts. Um, and you can see if you scroll down, these are all looking at um, your year zero to year one performance. And you can see that I'm increasing in all these areas. The really important chart I feel is at the very bottom where it says market potential versus actual. So this blue bar is my market potential. 
the yellow is my sales. So I only sold um, 2,000 cars. I could have sold 2,200 cars. So I gave up these sales to somebody else. Same thing with my truck. I could have sold 1,800, but I only sold 1,700. So this is lost potential that went to another company. So when I do my forecasting for next year, I'm going to base it off of this blue bar, not my yellow, to give me a better idea of forecasting. Okay. And if I look at industry charts, um, I could see uh, myself. Now there's only, um, I'm only playing against two computer players here, but I can see how I did against the computer players and I can get an idea of my performance, how it fits in with everybody else. Okay, so that would be how I would have done round one of the simulation and now um, automatically set to start over in year two and begin again. You'll notice the expectations have increased and but the price I can sell the car has increased and here's my cost reduction for my investment. So now when I build my car I'm going to get this sort of reduction in the price. So meaning that if, I, if I'm going to spend $300 on my fuel economy I'm getting $1,200 reduction based on those operational investments made on the production page. So my direct costs are lower, helping you to have a bigger profit margin. Okay, so that's my, that's my year one wrap up and review. Uh, now I encourage you to use your practice rounds to um, keep learning and testing things out if you want to improve your performance and complete round team competition round two before Thursday night, before 11 p.m. Thursday night so I can process again and we can uh, run round two and, and finish the two rounds for the week. Okay, good job everybody and I hope you're enjoying the class and I'll talk to you soon.